So we're going straight into the next session. And um, working. Is it working? We're ready? I think it's working. OK. Um, so I've been toying around with a, a kind of bonkers slash brilliant idea about setting up a, an artist in residence program in my university. And one of the first people that I wanted to talk to about that idea was my friend and colleague, uh, Kevin Moffat. Um, Kevin. Hello. Hello. Um, so Kevin's here representing a, 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 a researcher artist collective. Hello, Sujatha, who's not in the room, but uh, I think we're going to hear from Sujatha on, we are, yes, on like film in a mo. Um, so Kevin uh, works in the School of Life Sciences at the University of Warwick, and I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell you about his research first of all. Okay, yeah, thank you, Helen. Um, yes, my name's Kevin. I've been in the School of Life Sciences at Warwick for, oh, yeah, a long time, <laughs> 30, 35 years. <laughs> I'm due to retire soon, don't worry about me. Um, I came to this role that I have in the department. I, my, back, my research background is in looking at behavioral genetics. I'm really, truly interested. What keeps me awake at night is how fruit flies jump up and down. That's what I want to know, and why they jump up and down. But actually, it turns out once you've solved that, most of that problem, nobody actually cares very much. Um, and so I ended up looking, um, using the models of the genetic organism I used to look at dementia. Um, <laughs> if I'm really monetary about it, because there's more funding in dementia than jumping fruit flies. Um, what that brought me to was an, a massive amount of public engagement, uh, going out to groups and talking to non-scientists, and I found out I absolutely loved this. Um, I'm not sure I was always very good at it, but I absolutely enjoyed myself talking to the WI about how they were going to die quite soon of horrible diseases, which isn't a very um, utopian thing to, <laughs> to, to, to look at. So my, my background is very much as an academic researcher. Um, but one of my passions has been communication. And what I knew and what irritated me was that nobody would recognize how creative scientists are. They cannot do their job unless they are creatives. But the curriculum we ran at universities effectively prevents this. We just follow the A-levels. We give more and more information, more and more uh, learning objectives to meet, more and more examinations. And they turn out, as, if they're unlucky, they turn out as mini-me's. That's not really what I wanted to do. So very early on, the dangerous thing is to give somebody who's a slightly bonkers, to use Helen's phrase, is, is to give them some power. Yeah. And I became director of undergraduate studies. And that allowed me to set up a communications course, which I've probably built into the largest undergraduate science communication course in the UK. I have about 200 students now uh, each year who, who take this as an option out of that's 50% of the year in, in our department. Um, I make them do an A-level drama day. 60, it's nothing better than 60 biologists coming into the room, si hardcore scientists, and say, me saying, I don't know why you've got your shoes and socks on, because today we're going to do drama. We're going to do empathy training. We're going to do storytelling. And eventually I get down to the science and I get down to politics. Um, it's proven very popular. I've now actually trained everybody to do my job there, and I've stepped away from the course, but it still runs to this day. With that, what I found is that I found undergraduates who had incredible creativity. I found people who designed websites for, for Gucci. I had people who had diplomas in the cello. All things were, un and my fantasy in, in all of this was, much to the irritation of the university sometimes, was to m make the students meet their learning objectives through an assessment of their choice and allow them to be creative. And suddenly I had people who were doing sculptures in mushroom pottery. Um, I, had, I, think I, I had to go to Johnny Herbert and ask him about haiku poetry at one stage because it didn't make any sense to me about how many syllables there were. And I, I, all I knew is I didn't think the poetry was very good. It turned out it wasn't, I'm glad. So um, I got involved with creatives. And then what comes along with that is people start asking you. And I was thinking, I was, I was chatting to Charlotte earlier. Um, I'm going on a bit, aren't I? But I haven't got Sue to stop I'm me. I'm going to pull yeah. you back. Yeah, yeah so, so. Um, I, I worked with lots of theatre companies. Um, the local one highly sprung at quite a lot. Um, and uh, last theatre company over in the Draper's Hall, just over here, I worked, did a week-long session with them. Uh, uh, amazing experience. So with that, my head of department, I somehow persuade her. Thank you, Miriam, you're not here. But um, thank you for allowing me to employ a poet. 
um, for three months, one day a week for, th for three months, and we extended it to six months with the help of WIE. Sujatha is actually, um, you can see her in the middle here, she's actually swimming in the Maldives at the moment. Couldn't persuade her to come back to Coventry. Uh, yeah, I can, you can pull me back and I can tell you about Sujatha. Well, yeah, I'd like to hear uh, for us to hear a bit more about this project. This was partly, uh, as Kevin said, uh, supported by his department and partly funded through the Institute of Engagement's uh, Collaboration and Co-Production Fund. So that's a fund that's specifically set up to enable people to collaborate and work in partnership. Can you tell us a bit about specifically about what you and Sujatha did together? Yeah, so, so the, the, the project was initially not an outreach. I didn't want to talk to the community out there. I, didn't, I do lots of that anyway in my normal job. What I wanted to do was actually scientists live in silos and they don't talk to each other. So we actually developed this initially as an in-reach project. Um, and there was nothing better than having a poet who had free reign. We had no editorial control. I introduced her. We actually framed it within, if for those who know about the Athena Swan um, organization, we, we were looking at the diversity of uh, the, the gender diversity in the department. So we interviewed, t we picked 12 people. I persuaded 12 people to talk to Sujatha. She then wrote 50 or 60 poems about them and their co workers. And um, the great thing about that was, the, the, first of all, the scientists had no editorial control, and then they had, they had to work very hard to understand what she'd done. And that brought about conversations. And actually, then scientists became jealous of each other. Why didn't you choose me? What, what, I don't understand what this is about. And they actually were suddenly talking to each other in a way they hadn't communicated, because they don't go to each other's seminars. They don't go to each other's research group talks. They sit in little silos. So it was actually really, really... I want to say innovative in that, in that. We haven't finished that part of the project. But immediately, immediately we were doing this. Of course, I worked with the scientists doing their outreach projects, and it became absolutely apparent that this would be brilliant for the public as well. And we took our, we, we developed a number of side projects around uh, this in-reach project to be an outreach project, talking to communities all over Coventry, generally. So is that what you've got a video of I have today? a video just of um, actually one of the projects... Uh, now, you won't recognize, if you can play the video if you like, and it will have Sujatha's voice on it. And maybe that's what we should do first. And I can Let's have a look and then you can tell us about it. I don't know. Reticulum in Latin means a little net and was later given various uses in biology, cytology, histology, etc., and made a southern constellation by French astronomer Lacaille in 1763. The way grief moves through water. The shape of your lips when they hold the word whale. My period jumper that could take you under, not of a fist that caught you out. Cells lined with lace sutured in code. A headdress with pin curls for brains. Chiffon shaped to bait tiny sea daughter pearls. Twinkles found in the grounds of Bet and Phil Noir. The rind of old eyes punctured by love. The way milk creeps when spilt near a shoe. The flare of things that eventually find you. What the sky becomes when it lands on black coffee and skin that trawls. Trepanation. The whisper of fontanelles. Herringbone gauze, fishnets on wet legs writhing, pink Meccano for girls, blue macrame for boys, maps with their A roads cut out, a swarm of stars named WWW. So if Sujatha was here, I'd be wanting to ask her now about 
her process and how we get to that poem from an engagement with your research. Can you fill it, that in for us a little bit, Kevin? I can, I can try, yes. I, I was often in the room, not always. Um, so the, the, the initial pictures you saw of the net kind of moving is the inside of a plant cell, a tobacco plant, um, and under a special microscope. So it was quite, we found quite easy to blow Sujatha's mind. Pretty much every laboratory she would walk into and they explain what they were doing it was quite revolutionary, quite an, an insight for her, hopefully. And so the poems are her reaction. So how she gets to the, the film noir that you see with the video. It's, so we work with a videographer called Paul Winridge and we did some other work with a guy called Ray Spence, who's a, a local photographer in, in Leamington Spa. But so the process was to immerse her in the lab for a day. Um, and then I would take her through some of the vocabulary if she couldn't understand it. Um, and then she would be utterly creative about it. We would have no creative and no editorial control. That was quite important to me. I didn't, I, although I was directing her to the person, I didn't want to have anything to do with the creativity because I wanted it to be her interpretation. I don't know if that helps at all, but the process was one of immersion and access to, to, the, to the researchers. What were the most surprising things for you that came out of your collaboration with Sujatha? I, I should say, we were very excited to hear that Sujatha's poem, Reticulum, was nominated for the Aesthetica Poem of the Year Award. So it's, it, we, it, we yeah, were so, very, very jazzed about that. Yeah, so I, of course, as a scientist, I had to learn some, because I was going for Nature and Cell and you know, the New England Journal of Medicine. These were my, and then I had, to, uh, so we was quite okay. impressed that they were shortlisted into, um, into a number of top publishers in the UK, that the, the, the book as it stands. So it's now with Pindrop Press and it was long listed with another um, publisher from Birmingham. Uh, and we were really, yeah, I, even I learned to be excited because I, ha I had <laughs> to be educated in this world um, about aesthetic or creative uh, writing. So I think it, it was in the top 50 from 3,000 poems. So it was shortlisted with that society. So the, I can't say I'm surprised at it because I, I learnt as I was immersing, I would, Sue would share these poems with me. So the, the most amazing thing for me was to see them being built. Um, and I had and suddenly an appreciation of the creativity and the use of words. And I hadn't appreciated for my part how quickly the writing would be done and how long the editing would be done. So that was, and that, maybe that's different for different artists, but that's the way she worked with the words. Um, so for me, that was surprising. Um, and I was almost joyful in a way that we still haven't published the book. It felt like a, an academic exercise. When I go through a research paper, it takes me a year to reiterate and reiterate and reiterate. And I saw that with this other world that I was suddenly immersed into. So that was surprising to me. I thought it would be much quicker, but it wasn't. Um, but joyful then that we, you know, it's seeing some acclaim across the UK. Um, what's surprising for Sue, I think, was is, is how how different the world of science is. How what actually goes on day to day in a lab, how hard it is, how creative the scientists have to be to answer their questions, and then her interpretation over what she sees physically and. Um, uh, on, on our computer screens, on our microscopes, um, on our agar plates, whatever it is, and she can be very descriptive about that. Mm -hmm. Is that surprising? I, 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 I sort of know, in a way. As a project that moved from inreach, as you describe it, to, to outreach, can you tell us a little bit about how it enabled you to take research to perhaps new audiences or in new ways? Yeah, I think it, it was in new ways. It's, 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 so we, like some of the others here, have worked with a lot of the local schools. So, but what they weren't expecting was a scientist to come, off, come up and help deliver a, a, a creative writing workshop. So I would go to a school and I would give them a little bit of science on how, let's say, the heart works. Um, and uh, then, we, then to watch Sue work with the A-level, uh, not A-level, but these year 11 and year 12 biologists, uh, scientists from, a from some of the local schools in North Coventry um, was fantastic because she has an, eth an, ethnic, an ethnic connection with them and suddenly their creativity and uh, being allowed to put that creativity into my world was like, a, like an allowance that was made in front of me. And that was fantastic because they were suddenly drawing pictures of what would a unicorn heart look like and what would its electrocardiogram look like and what happened if you crossed a dog with a lion and what would that look like? And of course, as, if I was going to teach you about the heart, I would never do those things. But because we did those things, their creativity has stayed with them. 
and they drew pictures and they wrote poems and we published it on Sue's websites and everything. It's, it's interesting. I think lots of people today have talked about permissions in various permission ways. To, yeah, permission to play, uh, permission to work differently, permission to fail, permission to listen and sit back as well as move forward. So yeah, permissions had, are a kind of interesting we thing. Did a, we did a very different one where we took uh, Ray Spencer, photographer from Leamington, we took 12 of Sir Jatha's poems and we shrank them. And we shrank them and put them on microscope slides and you couldn't read them unless you had a microscope. So they came to an outreach session. We did a, we do a Science on the Hill event in the department and lots of people just sat down around all of these microscopes. And we did it, I think, again, for the Festival of Social Sciences. Uh, we reiterated that performance of, of micros microscopic poetry, um, which is I hadn't thought of doing. It would never occur to me to do that. And yet Sue pulled that off brilliantly. It was a really interesting way to do that. This is, this is kind of a funny uh, question to ask somebody who... who um, well, maybe it isn't a funny question to ask somebody who, who started out by saying they're about to retire. Yes. Um, Sorry. But, so my question is really, what's next? And that might be what's next for you and or Sue as a, a partnership, or it might be more broadly, what do you think is next for your colleagues in relation to working with artists? Yeah. Um, so, in the future. So, I, yes, I've trained my next director of outreach. Um, and I think what we've learned from that is more workshopping, less talking would be the simple part. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, more workshop, less talk. Um, so not to go to the school and give a nice presentation on how the heart works, but actually to be creative in the use of whether it be... I mean, I've worked with, with theatre companies, but in this case with the poet and creative writing, that was pretty inspirational and we saw suddenly the creativity of the kids being involved there so I think if the outreach team as it goes forward and, and, and they'll maintain the, the links that we have with the schools as, as oh, Rachel's gone but oh, I can't see Rachel anyway <laughs> but Rachel was talking about some of the schools that we all have links with um, that will be maintained and we'll be a bit more creative in, mm. in how we deliver the information it's interesting depends on the age group yeah so um, we've done um, from primary schools to the university of the third age, it's all can be slightly different. But uh, yeah, but, but more creativity into our, in, in, in our presentations to schools and to public groups um, and to the groups that come in because we invite people into the department now, which we've never done before. I think that sense of uh, recognising the creativity in academic work and also recognising the processes of research that go into artistic practice was a really strong theme that came out of a project that India and Jackie uh, set up previously called Coventry Creates. That mm -hmm. sense of like, you bring, bring artists and researchers together, one doesn't do art, one doesn't do research. There's, there's a kind of melding and a, and a, a kind of a building. Yeah, I think, I, I, the, come back to the word permissions, I wanted, to, from when my start of my project with InReach, it was to actually show the scientists that they had permission to be creative in ways beyond their science yeah. because lots of them do have that creativity it's just they actually separate their worlds yeah. and actually they can use those, their their worlds to actually work with a creative and release them in a way that's the, and I think we've done that somewhat with Sajatha um, and I think we can do more of that in the future Brilliant. and that's the bit I'll miss yeah yeah <laughs> I'm sure we'll drag you back somehow or other. Um, okay, we've got time for a couple of questions, if there are any. India. So, so the question is, how does Sajatha and I meet? Um, it took a long time. Um, Sajatha had done an original project with the medical school called the iDNA project that some in the room may have heard of. Um, and she was one of the poets involved in a small part of that project. She then sent a letter to my head of department, which sat on their desk for six months. And eventually, lots of things that, that are slightly, shall I say, crazy, um, get passed to my desk. And I just go, what, where, why didn't you send this to me ages ago? This looks like great fun. I will just say yes to most things.